the way to the sun. We thank you for safe travel. Yes, sir. We thank you for the people that are on their way here today, Lord. Father God, cleanse our mind and our hearts so we may be your message more today in life is better. Father God, please come into this community. Work with the young, the young men and the young women on attitudes, behaviors, thought process, even the, the drug epidemic that is going on, not just in this community, but all over the world, Father God. Be with us on this evening, Father God. Father God, we just ask that you come and fill this room. We thank you on last week for sending the angels to come in here for healing. Father God, we ask you if that is possible today, to send your healing angels to this room. Send your warfare, warfare angels into this room to fight off anything that is not of you. Father God, we just ask that you, we are able to bring more people to this table, not just on Thursday, but on Sunday to learn your word and find out what, what our will in our life, your will for our life is, Father God. I know sometimes our mouths are not thinking of the right thing or our heart is not in the right place, Lord, but for God, Father God, just give us a chance and just knock on us and let us know that when we're doing wrong. Father God, we ask that the Holy Spirit come in and fill this room right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. We ask for you. We thank you for your son giving his life thank for you. our sins, yes. Father God. Father God, we just thank you for the babies that are being born on today and the months to come. And we pray for those that are coming home to you, Father God, and we pray for their families right now, Father God. We pray for the things that they go on while we're talking and we may not know in this country and other countries, Father God. Be with them, for they not know what they do. Father God, we just thank you, Father God. There's not enough time that we can say thank you for saving our lives, for saving us from accident, for becoming an accident, or creating. Work within me, Father God. Yes. Heal me from the things that I, I am dealing with within my body, Father God. Heal those that need healing within their bodies, their minds, their souls, emotionally and mentally and physically, Lord. Mm -hmm. Father God, we just come to you right now. People across the, the world, friends and family that I know right now that are in need of food, food, financial situation, home. Father God, I ask that you send your angels to them right now and bless them, Father God, with whatever you need, Whatever you feel that you need fit for, Father God, just let them know that there's people praying for them right now, Lord. Father God, there's, not, there's, there's so much going on in this community. We just ask that you touch the, uh, the people that work in 300 Perry Street. We ask you to touch the people that work in 386, 387 Perry Street, the management and all those people that work within this community, the janitors, the maintenance, to keep up keep these buildings so that so that so that the people that live in this community and in these buildings do not get sick and get cross contamination of anybody else's infections and just nastiness, Father God. We ask that you just be with us right now in, in your holy name. Father God just teaching me how to pray fervently, much better than I do. Father God, I just ask you to come into my heart right now, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Good prayer. Thank you. It takes time. It takes time. I I've been at that stage. I just say, God, whatever you put on my heart, I'm here. I'm a work in progress. I can admit it. Mm -hmm. Just go for faith, line.
Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we do humble ourselves. And Father, we thank you for the opening prayer for Deaconess Ruffin. Father, stretch out your hands in mercy. Continue to pump this atmosphere. Get up, and exalted in the name of Jesus. Have free force. Move by your spirit, Lord God. Cast down every evil weight, every disruptive spirit. Break every yoke and break every chain tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, have your way, Lord God, upon your people. That your will be done, dear Father. Be on my That your will be done, dear God. Have your way today. That your will be done, dear God. Lord God, have to stay in your presence, because in your presence is the fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. God, we say thank you. Tonight, dear God, we thank you for waking us up. We thank you for allowing us to see a brand new day. Thank you for your grace and mercy that covers us. Thank you, Lord God, for handling every situation. Even when we are up under attack, yeah. Lord God, the attacks are getting stronger. The warfare feels thicker, heavier, even the very shadow of the enemy. And Lord God, we don't reverence the enemy, but God, we bind up his works. Yeah. We bind up his tactics. We bind up his warfare. We bind up his demons. Yeah. We cast down every evil work, even the spirit of miscarriage. Yeah. We plead the blood of Jesus even over sorcery, witchcraft, and wrongful prayers, and evil prayers, and even yeah. strange prayers that have been sent out against his uh, assignment. Yeah. We, shall not, we shall not yield to that assignment, to that which the witch have sent, or warlock, whatever spirit that have been sent against this, Lord God. Even sometimes some of us feel like we're itching. Mm -hmm. That's flesh, but also it's wizardry. And we plead the blood against the wizard in the name of Jesus, the head priest, the wizardry. We cast down his works and we send it back in the name of Jesus. Yes. We bind up the darkness that which we've come up from. But Lord God, we thank you for the light because Jesus Christ, you are the great intercessor. Yes. You are the healer. You are the deliverer. You are the one that set us free. You are the one that made us whole. You are the one that called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Yes. Father, we say thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are. We thank you for what you're doing, Lord God. We thank you for a turn of events in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for the anointing that destroys your, that same Lord spirit God. is in here again, that angelic presence. We thank you for your angels that's on assignment, Lord. that's warring in the spirit, that's fighting every battle and winning every war. And Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for saving us because of your grace. We thank you for sending that person to witness to us and say, what must we do to be saved? Yeah. Father, we honor that we counted a privilege on being saved another day. But thank you. And Lord God, we pray that this community will be saved by your grace. Amen. Before that door is completely shut, we speak a word of salvation over this region, over every tower, in the name of Jesus, that many will come to be saved. Even this summer, that people will come to be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and be baptized in your name. Lord God, we ask that you're saved, Lord God. And those that turn away, they're nothing but atheists. Mm. They don't believe in you. Some don't want you. No one likes rejection. But yet you died on the cross for every one of their sins, their situations, and their circumstances. Keep your hand of mercy upon this region. Let angels descend in us in upon the grounds. In the name of Jesus, from 300 Perry all the way down to the rent office. From Hamburg all the way down to Louisiana. And exit on South Park in Chicago. God, do something in this region. Rebuild this community. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, give us new workers that have your heart. Clerks that have your heart social workers that have your heart, yeah. that don't be a believer. Touch the uh, constructing workers, Lord God, even at yeah. City Hall, over this region, yeah. Lord God. Do a new work in the very projects, Lord God. We've been looked over long enough. Every other area has been rebuilt, except this one. But let us be the first. Once we were last, let us be the first. In the name of Jesus, fix up this place, Lord God. You, you, you're the one that made the hand of man. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and those that dwell therein. We are your believers right here in this community. And Lord God, if there be any fraudulence, if there be any of uh, those who are into theft, that you will arrest them, that you will deal with them, that you will deal with their heart. Take up them out of them a heart of stone and put in them a heart of flesh. Give them a new spirit. We can't stay convicted, only you can convict a man. Only you can turn situations around. But do a new work over in this area, Father. We need your help from your mighty throne room. And the Bible says, you hear the cry of the righteous, and you will deliver them. The Bible says, and this old man cried unto me, and I heard him, and he answered my prayer. Bring deliverance upon this region. Bring about a deliverance in the name of Jesus. And we bind up the demon of poverty in the name of Jesus. Destroy that yoke, that fetter, that chain off the neck that surrounds these people. 
Whatever their struggle is, only you can judge a man. Only you can deliver a man. Only you can make them whole. Do a new work in this area, Lord God. But when it's over, God, let us have peace. When they say it's over and we have to move, give us peace. We'll see each other again, but just give us peace. That the peace of God that surpasses our own understanding be in our minds and in our hearts. We know that this soon shall come to pass. But you've been good to us. You've been yeah. merciful. You've been kind. You spared many of us. Some of us we couldn't leave because you said to stay. But thank you for your mercy, Lord God. We thank you for who you are. We glorify your name. We Lord God, look upon those that are sick and afflicted, been wounded, been hurt in this region. Bring about a healing and all the chaos and all the confusion over this area, from Chicago all the way down to halfway Louisiana. We bind up the acts of the enemy. We bind up weapons of the enemy. We bind up lies of the enemy. We bind up deceit of the enemy. Amen. We plead the blood of Jesus over there. Even people who have spreaded rumors on some of us. We plead the blood over those, those lies. Yes. And the psalmist said, a liar shall not tarry in his sight. Yes. Only you can remove the liar. And we speak peace over this place, Lord God. Whoever's not real is going to show up. Yes. Sooner or later, the truth will be revealed. If there be any fraud, even in the midst of us, you will reveal the truth. So Lord God, help us to stay focused. Repent daily, pray daily, study the word daily, and fast daily. God, help us to stay abreast in the word. Stay in your word and stay in the scripture. Not quoting, but applying. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Let your will be done, dear God. We honor you today for who you are. We glorify you. And we say yes to your will. Yes to your will. Yes to your will, Father. We glorify you. We exalt you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord.
we ask right now that as the pastor reads his scriptures, after he finished reading his scriptures, that we keep our uh, questions or answers to a two-minute limit, please. Thank you. Whoever taught this, the, the, the lady herself, have seen a lot. First, she was an intercessor, 
then she started walking in the things of God. She's a prophet. Mm -hmm. So she must have experienced yes. and she has seen a lot of these things going on. Mm -hmm. Turn to the book of Acts, chapter 14, verse 23. And I'm going to read it out loud. And it says here, And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they Commend, commended them to the Lord on whom they then believed. On whom they believed. That's Acts chapter 14, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And it says here, I got the notes at the bottom. That's why it's good to have a good study Bible so you can read the notes, mm -hmm. so you can understand the paragraph, the chapter, and the verse. The appointed of elders, overseas, or pastors, was done not only by seeking the spirit, will prepare prayer and fasting, but also by examining the character of spiritual gifts, uh, reputations, and history, blameless of the men under consideration. Mm -hmm. If they were found to be beyond reproach, they were qualified to serve. And there's another uh, scripture that goes with that, First uh, Timothy chapter one, verse number five. First Timothy chapter one. You have it, you can just Read it out loud, please. It says, Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith. Keep on. Okay. First Timothy chapter 1, verse number 5. Oh, okay. I got it. I got it. It says here, Now the end of the commandment is charity, the love and a pure heart, and a good conscience of faith. Warning against false teachers. Those are the characteristics that she just read, and mine's are different, different from hers reading. Those are the characteristics that you must have as a leader. Mm -hmm. But in the last days, men shall be what? Lovers of the themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some false teachers in there, mm -hmm. false leaders. Mm -hmm. We have to be very mindful. If they do not come with the love of God, then I have not been sent. You have to be so careful. Even in eldership, there's a lot of false teachers mm -hmm. on camp. Mm -hmm. We have to be very, very mindful of how we carry ourselves. God bless you. God bless you. Mm -hmm. And it says here, verse number five, the supreme goal of instructing instructions from God. God's word is not Bible knowledge itself, but in an inward moral transformation that expresses itself in love. Purity of the heart. And that's the type of heart we have to have while we're serving. Mm -hmm. Now, a false prophet or a false teacher, heart will not be pure. Um, your heart has to be pure. And we pray for those. We're not telling nobody that. But your heart has to be pure. Your conscience and faith without hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is one who wears a mask, yes. pretending. I was at a repast a couple of years ago, and this lady was an elder, I'm not judging her, but I could tell she wasn't correct. Mm -hmm. Her demeanor, her face looked grayish. Even her mouth looked like a dark tunnel. And I said, who's this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, when you have the range to see, mm -hmm. you look at that person from top to bottom. You're not judging, you're examining the fruit. Mm -hmm. She was elder, she was in ministry, but she was false. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to be very, very mindful of who you surround yourself with, who we keep company with. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And uh, your conscience has to be clean without hypocrisy, without wearing a mask. 
Note a good conscience, it says here also, concerning this truth, to impart importance, fact must be kept to mind. The Bible concept on teaching and learning is not primarily to impart knowledge or prepare oneself. Um, academically, it is to produce holiness and a righteous lifestyle, confirming to the ways of God. You must live a God-fearing life even when you're in leadership mm -hmm. and not pretending or acting. Mm -hmm. I heard a man say something years ago, he was in leadership and I was watching. My thing is, when I see you make it there, my prayer is that I don't make the same mistakes. Amen. When you see people make a lot of mistakes, the Lord will speak to you and say, don't you do what they just did. Mm -hmm. He was preparing for Easter service, 93. And I won't even say where I was. I used wisdom. He was pulling out chairs because we knew it was going to be a full house. And I was fasting that morning. And I heard somebody say, yeah, get them chairs out there because I'm going to need that money. Oh, wow. So, oh I almost dropped the chair after I heard that. Me too. <laughs> so, oh my. Spirit. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You get the chairs if you want to. I put the chair down and just kind of looked at that brother a couple times. I think the room got dark a little bit. I said, ooh, this and that just here. See? But what was in his heart, it comes out your mouth. That's true. It ain't always about money. God gonna supply your needs. You just got to be patient mm -hmm. and really, really trust Him. We still talk about the true prophet and the false prophet. What am I saying? That man told me was in his heart. His motive and his intent was not about God. That's like I just said. Your conscience got to be seared. You got to be clean. You got to be walking in faith. If you're a leader, you got to be walking in righteousness and holiness. He was not walking that way. Now to this day, everything he had back then has dried up. Mm -hmm. Lost his homes, gave his ministry up. Not speaking against him. Mm -hmm. I learned something from him. Yeah. Stop being so full of pride. Mm -hmm. That's pride, honey. And it says here, the teacher of God must be someone whose life illustrates uh, perverseness in true faith and holiness. I have to live the life when I stand behind here and when I go out that door. Mm -hmm. You see me doing any other thing? No. I was making a joke with somebody, and made she rest in peace, she was so funny, Miss Gail, Brian. I said, Miss Gail, what if you see me outside with a mirror in my hand? She said, I'll take it from you. <laughs> she had me dying laughing. I said, okay. I said, I'm just making, she said, I know. She said, because we all know you don't drink. Right. You know, if you, you don't smoke, you don't dance, you don't play no type of music, but gospel. She said, but see, I know you. She said, because you want to live a double life. She said, I know you and God. She said, I, and she, this came from a sinner's mouth. I know you guys, she said, I know the difference. She said, I know several Muslims who are in the faith and they don't pick up none of those things. She said, I could tell the difference because she was a church girl, she was a backslider. She knew. And she could tell the difference. Everybody that's in the body of Christ should have a, a, the gift of discernment. Amen. You should be able to pick up and sense, but that don't mean you pick up and carry. Mm -hmm. What you sense, you see, you release it and, and let it go. In the same breath, you have to be spiritual, discerning what's around you. And when you're gifted like that, you cannot walk with everybody. You cannot befriend everybody. Sometimes God will cause you to walk alone. And that's how God is about his children. He don't want us walking with everyone. Because if we do, we become contaminated. Some years ago, I remember having a dream. I was dealing with three other women and one guy. One of those guys is called, the guy was called to be a prophet. And the other ones were still practicing their gifts. One was a spiritualist. I knew that from the beginning. And uh, I never forget one night I asked God, I said, God, what is their motive and who am I walking with? Did you get this roughing? I kid you not. I had a dream one night and I was shooting spiders off my body. And spiders mean to be wicked. You can sit, both sit over here and pull the chairs from over the table over here. Okay? And it'll make you feel comfortable. Yeah, I think it's comfortable. So, yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I had a dream. I was 
dealing with some people in ministry, and I asked God, what was their motive? God bless you, our father, Minister D. Thank you, God. Minister D. And God bless your sister. And I was telling them, I had a dream. I was dealing with some people in ministry some years ago in the mid 90s. Uh -huh. Well, of course, you're on fire and you have a zeal, but that's still not the anointing. That's just a zeal. And I asked God, what was their motive? And that night I had a dream, spiders was crawling all over my body, and I had to shoot them off. And he was trying to tell me in so many words, you're walking amongst the, the wicked. Ooh. He said, you got somebody in your circle that is wicked, in spite of me to be wicked. I have a book that I brought here by Ira Milligan, Dreams and Interpretation, God's Visions in the Night. And, that, and I looked up the word spider, and it meant wicked and witchcraft. Wow. So you have to be very, very cautious. Of who, that's a deep book. It, is, yeah. it goes from colors to buildings. Oh, he's got one. I remember yeah. asking you what the name yeah. was. Yeah, Ira Milligan. Okay. Yeah, and it's also check it out on Yahoo.com. He's actually on Facebook, Ira Milligan. Is he? Yes, I talked to him very briefly. Yeah, and he's still doing classes on the prophetic. He deals with the prophetic gift. Can you do that? Ira, I, R, A, Milligan. Milligan, yeah. I need that book. Am I LL? Like yeah. Milligan, but Milligan? Yes. Yep. Deep book. He's a good author. It's two books for that. One book is orange and one is lavender. So okay. you're going to get two books. And I think the price is about, for anybody who do be books, any person that's a Christian or minister or vegan or evangelist, you should always have a library. Oh, I got one. Okay. I got Jessica. Yeah. Facebook be down and she had me to look up something. And uh, Elder Rochelle has the book. We both are looking at the general book at the same time. That's a good book. You keep a good library. You read the Bible first, then you read the book second. Okay. And do not lend out your books. Don't lend them out? No. You don't lend out your books. My pastor, Bishop Sanders, yes, my pastor Sanders, told me, you do not lend out your books. He said they'll come back with sauce all in them. And then I'll come, <laughs> come back and wait to lend them out. Sauce. So, he has spaghetti sauce on one chapter. I said, okay, Bishop, thank you. <laughs> But he was just being wise. That's why I tell people, listen to your pastors. Okay. You know, let them pour into you. You know, amen? Amen. We need to get that, uh, that out there. We don't have too many Bible bookstores, but the one way out sure. Uh, yeah. one, it's one on Fillmore, uh, Bishop Gordon, that's what has one, on Fillmore, in Landon. Fillmore, Landon. Yeah, and then there's another one, or um, the other one out further. What's the name of that book? Bookstore. Um, it's out there, they're cheating wild almost. Oh. Yeah, Bishop Morton Sweat owns that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he has plenty of books, too. He do, I like yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Well, we was in the ministry together with Bishop Sam. I got to do that. How much that for? About 20 or 25. That's perfect. Or you can go, go to Amazon and type in that box. Amazon stuff is very, very pricey. Not expensive, pricey. So you can afford you can find some people that bought, bought the book and it'll tell you what kind of condition it, it's yeah. in. And some some of them are in excellent condition and you can pay sometimes $3 for them. Yeah, I've, 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 I've right. Like and even Craigslist has the books. Craigslist? Yeah. Same thing, yeah. And they give you the books and they be in good condition, like she just said. A lot of those books are not torn up. Yeah. Yeah, that is an excellent book. Yeah. To start a library. If you're a minister, you should be having a library of books that you should be reading. Mm -hmm. The Three Battlegrounds, Francis Frangie Payne. Another good author. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go to uh, 11. A false teacher, prophet, will have a life that looks nothing like his sermons. And I'm going to read this out loud. We're going to get to the scriptures in a minute. A false teacher and prophet primarily errs in preaching the word of God, and actually. But another significant, smart, and unit, a unit pastor is one who contradicts the context of their own sermons. They mean they're ad-libbing. They did not read the history of the text, so they start adding to the word. Okay. They didn't thoroughly study they, they, they would stay there more to theatrics and acting out the sermon, yes. oh. but not really sticking with the text. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's why you study the text and read it 
through, when they say turn to such and such and such, you read that chapter, you read that verse, and while they're reading, you read the history of it, so you make sure they're on point. Okay. That's what a false prophet and a false teacher does. They're more like a novice. Yeah. They add it. And the Bible says if you add or take away from the word, you become a what? A curse. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They make up their own sermons to please the people and not please God. We just came, me and me just came out of a class we completed. And that's what I teach you. Burden. Burden. Do you know that? Who? Pastor Burden. What church? Um, I don't know what church. He told us how to write sermons. But we took a class at Reverend Pritchard's church and we completed it. And he was teaching us basically what you were saying to break down our sermons and don't add and take it away because you add and take it away. And people in the sermon, I mean, in the service, that they may go to sleep or they might go right out the door because yeah. the Holy Spirit gives you enough time and then it quenches. And when it quenches, you should be able to quench at the same time. So you got to know when to stop. stop. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If you don't hold the people all day, right. like I told you, nigga, this brother, there's what, no more 20, 20 minutes, 25 minutes Sunday, I give you who, when, where, That's why, good. and how. That's good. That's good. Bishop the White E. Brown taught me that. Years ago, when I was in Birmingham, okay. he said, study the history of the text, break down every word that you don't understand, and feed it to the people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they can get an understanding. Uh huh. You, you don't preach and yell at them; you minister to them. You right. give them what thus saith the Lord. Right. And you go when you minister, you go consecrate, fasting. Fasting. Yeah. So yokes can be destroyed, and then the Holy Spirit will step in and say, okay, let me have it from here. Take over. Let the Holy Spirit have His way. There's been times where I've spoken several prophetic words. It was going to be like this. Man. <laughs> 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> when the Lord said the government shutdown was getting ready to end, it ended three yeah. weeks later. Because God's hand was not in it. The Bible says that the government shall rest upon what? His shoulders. How can you shut down something that don't belong to you? That's right. Everything. And it happened. <clears throat> uh, Coco's granddaughter walked in, and I watched her walk in, and she was moving, she sat right towards the back, and I told Coco when she got up, I said, I see a demon of jealousy around your granddaughter, somebody's getting ready to betray her. The next day, the next day. Yeah. it happened. She was out somewhere, and they left her. We got by the gallery of mom, looked on her, two people, mm -hmm. two people. Oh. Coco see me there, um, next time she said, oh boy, she said, Pastor Newman, Said what you said about my granddaughter came up the next day. Well, she couldn't wait to get here. When the message was said to go out, you know, you said, you know, you told them that what happened to the uh, granddaughter. Can't you pray against that? Or you no? can't. Sometimes God will reveal and tell you what's going to happen. Uh -huh. Sometimes God will give you dreams and tell you, yeah. start praying now. Why oh, I see. Yeah. Pray that it don't happen. Like you've seen the United States. All roused up for another war. Yeah. As soon as we go into prayer, it'll stop. Uh -huh. Sometimes prophecy is to forewarn you. Futuristic events waiting to happen. Yeah. So you have that ability to get in contact with Jesus Christ through yeah. prayer fasting. Right, right. And God will bump out. He hears you. Mm -hmm. I just told the scripture says the old man said, I cried unto them, him, and he heard me and he delivered me from my troubles. That's right. That was troubling us. So when we bow about the heavens and pray together, right. that stops the works yeah. of the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You have the spirit of oneness. Yeah. You, you have the Holy Ghost. You're walking in the oneness of Christ. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like that word, like you were saying before, like when he was preaching one day, I heard him say one accord. So we all reverend together. Yeah. And you can break some yokes. You know what I mean? Because we in the midst, but your mind got to be free, your thoughts got to be free, we got to be on one accord. Mm -hmm. And by being on one accord, we be meditating. Sometimes you gotta be in the house and just meditate. Turn the phone, see y'all. Uh, mm -hmm. Just be in that element. Because you're mm -hmm. not really missing nothing. Because by the time you hear what somebody got to say, it mm -hmm. messes you out that zone and yeah. you're already in that positive energy. It is, it is, it is true. It is possible uh, to fade your faith for an hour of in the pulpit, but also it's impossible to fade your faith through your whole week. Faith is expressed through your deeds. A false prophet will have a life full of evil deeds hidden from the public, of course. Do not expect a false prophet or teacher to open up his life.
to this church. There will be too many secrets um, for them, from them. Boss, mm -hmm. they'll come in and say what they'll say to the world, but they never got life. Mm -hmm. I was at a conference and I told them already, after some of this, we've mm -hmm. already experienced. Prophet that came to the city of Buffalo back in the late 90s. Mm -hmm. And my friend asked me to come. Back then I had a zeal, but I was still developing the anointing. Yeah. yeah. And so I went, and when I walked in, I said, God bless your prophet. And when I looked at him, he looked at him like this, he turned his head to the wall. Mm -hmm. I said, Oh, we're going to have a problem. I said, Something wrong there. Uh -huh. Oh, you turned your face. That was a little bit too fast. Why yeah. are you turning? I'm only saying hello. Yeah. And I kept watching him during the whole service. I said, There's Something wrong with this boy. Mm -hmm. Huh, turn wrong with that. Well, my friend kept laughing. She said, please. I said, look, I'm trying to tell you something wrong with this boy. <laughs> and, um, he was teaching. He was doing his thing. Good teacher. Yeah. Had the gift. Mm -hmm. But something wasn't broken. Something was off. That's a gift. And when he walked in, he was about digging his rough in the complexion. And no disrespect. You know what I'm about to tell you. When he left, he was two shades darker than me. That's the cloud of darkness. Yes. That's the cloud of darkness. Yeah, darkness. And I, began, I told him, I told him, I said, you're going to be here for a season. I said, but God is going to release you from Buffalo. Oh, he would not hear me. A woman evangelist came in the very next day, and the Spirit of God was so heavy, she fell out, and she spoke in tongues with the interpretation. Right. And she told him, she said, God said, tell the prophet it's time for him to leave. Right. Leave the town. Leave the town. And when, she, when he left, he was darker. And they said, oh, well, they said, oh, I know what's wrong with him. He on cocaine. Mm -hmm. He was on drugs the whole time. Oh. So some problems will not reveal to you what their lifestyle really is. If a prophet walk in and start talking about money, that's what he's after. Ooh, I know that. A prophet, a true prophet, will send you towards Jesus Christ. Right. The false prophet will pull you to his own lifestyle. And yeah. Many false prophets are what? In the land. In the land. I want to ask you now. We have a lot of people in this in the city that you know are some of them are prophets, but they get a lot of people from out of town. And those prophets that they use, like you said, some of them, not all of them. Why do we have to have so many that's coming out of town? When our town is the one that's really hurting on something. Well, they feel that they want a new sound and a new voice. And somewhere in between it, they're compromising. When mm -hmm. you know somebody is prophetically inclined, mm -hmm. uh, usually when a prophet comes, he's been sent. You don't have to send for a prophet. You got to send that prophet to our true yes. pastor yes. and come and correct the house. A prophet comforts, exalts, and edifies. Oftentimes, like Jeremiah, sometimes the prophet will warn the people, say, I hear the Lord saying, judgment is coming to this house. Right. Some years ago, back in the late 80s, there was a church on Genesee Street, high prophetic ministry. Right. Prophetic. Right. But all of a sudden, they started getting in their flesh. And the Spirit of God went real high, and this woman stood up, she said, I hear the Lord saying, he's getting ready to shut down this ministry. Oh. That ministry's been shut down for almost 33 years. Yeah. People tried to rent the building and try to get that anointed. The anointing has left. It smells like mildew. It's, 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 it's dead. It's dead. It's dead. Yeah. And the building is still up. Yeah. But it was some things going on, which I didn't know. I didn't know nothing about it. But it was some things that was going on that was ungodly. And so God shut it down. Those two leaders are still living. Yeah. And she's still prophesying. He's still a teacher, but they said he's very sick. See, when you start getting into your flesh, you are misleading the people. It's like a sister was saying, every day we are working progress. Every day God is pulling off layers off of us so that we can live a god fearing life. Right. You know, so we have to be very careful, as I said always, be careful who speaks into your life. The first person that's speaking to your life, not like Bishop Richard, he should be the very first one to speak into your life. I've always believed that because I've been around him several yeah. times. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Matthew chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. Who do you read? Who do you read? Uh, this is uh, 16 signs of a false prophet. You can write this down. Oh, 16 signs of a false prophet. prophet. Oh. Yes. Matthew chapter number 5, verse 19 and 20. And this is this this paper is on uh, yahoo.com. So type in the box. 
true problems and false problems that you're on your desktop or your cell phone, okay. and it'll pop up. She's a good teacher. She's a very good teacher. Matthew chapter number 5, verse 19 and 20. It says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these commandments, they shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall be exceed the righteous righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. And you know the Pharisees and scribes are what? Religious people? Yeah. They're religious. Religious. And you have a lot of religious people. No church theatrics, know the word, know how to pray for you, but religious. Yeah. Religious. Pharisees mm -hmm. and scribes were deeply religious. They still believed in what? The law. Wow. Jesus came to fulfill the law and what? Not break it. Not break the law. Good. So verse 19 describes it here. It says here, verse 19, Say Matthew chapter 5, verse 19 says, The position of the believer in the kingdom of heaven will be determined by your attitude towards God's law and by your teaching and practicing. Our decree of faithful, faithfulness it is the respect will determine our decree of glory in heaven. Verse 20 says, the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees was eternal only. They kept many rules, prayed, praised, fasted, read God's word, and attended worship service. However, they substituted outward act of correct inner attitude. Jesus said the righteousness that God requires of the believer is more. The heart and the spirit, not only the outward deeds, but conform to God's will in the faith and love. Not legalism. They were legalistic. They were not. They did not carry the love of God. And before you can operate as a prophet, a true prophet, you must have the love of God in you. And you must have the infilling and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So we have to be very careful how we carry ourselves. Don't walk like them. Be legalistic. That's right. God is not calling you to be legalistic or traditional. The Bible speaks about the traditions. Those are like bondages, curses. Go ahead. You can interrupt me. Um, I'm sorry. Can you say something? I, um, I keep forgetting to tell people I read from the New King James Version Study Bible. Mm -hmm. And as you was reading, and I was reading my notes. And the one part that hit me the hardest was, it says, however, the only righteousness that satisfies God's standard is faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And going back to, to the prophets, it's just my experience going to different churches, and I noticed the false prophets, they, to me, they fidget. All right. They can't stand still. They can't. Yep. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. not like they're talking with right. their hands. People, some true. people talk with their hands, but they're fidgety. They're, you know, they're always doing something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that just, yeah. that verse right there yeah. alone just hit me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just breaking it down mm -hmm. well, all yes. the way. If you're, if you're a true prophet, you're going to have that righteousness in Jesus Christ. And do the way of, of Jesus and abide by those commandments. Oh, yes. I was wow. at a, a service and I was asked to be a youth, one of the youth speakers. Uh, it was not a platform, I was the main speaker. So the one that invited me kept sitting over to the right and fidgeting. Because mm -hmm. yeah. the man was wrong with that brother. I mean, he told us that Bible back and forth about 30 times. I said, stop this. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Nervous. Nervous. Because the spirit wasn't correct. 
they had at least one time visiting. He was preaching. I was I just said church, but he was preaching. And all of a sudden, you know how you be praising God and praising God? Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, I seen something up on that pulpit with him. He came off the pulpit and he said, you know, do they see you praising God? Why don't you stop? I said, you better ask God. Because you came off the pulpit. You were supposed to stay up on that pulpit. But evidently something was bothering you up there and I see it. And I don't have to explain it. If anything, you should have been still doing what the Holy Spirit told you. So if it was a distraction and disturbance in your spirit, mm -hmm. you, you feel me when I say mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. And um, then he ended up going to the next church we went, prophesying on some more people. And this lady got sick. She, you, you ever seen somebody fall over their mouth and stuff mm -hmm. like that in the churches? What well, does happen? Spirits mm -hmm. jump on people and they fall and they had to get the bucket out. No, he do. He do. He know. Yeah. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure he do, but I can't. Mm -hmm. But if you know, watch it sometime when you out, and you, you, will, you will see that spirit, and it's not a weird spirit. I ain't going out. I ain't going out there. They I'm can here for life. I know, but they can come in <laughs> too, you know what I mean? You free to dance. No, they're not coming through that door. No. Yeah, I, I was just They saying. come, though. They come. Yeah. Yeah, people being purged and cleaned up and cleansed, or being delivered. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Yeah. I'm going to walk them straight to the door and have a nice day now. Bye. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. It happens, though. It's a thing that's saying about it. 1 Timothy chapter number 4, verse number 12. First Timothy chapter number 4. Verse number 12. Okay. And it says here, let no man despise thine youth, but thou an example of the believer, believers in the word, in conversation, and in charity, and in spirit, and in faith, and in purity. Those are characteristics. That's how God wants us to carry ourselves. This is Apostle Paul telling Timothy as he needs to be master God's people. This is how we're supposed to carry ourselves as Christians. But then somebody despised you. You know, some people get saved in their youth. Timothy was a young man. Yeah. And he was young and pastor. So Apostle Paul was teaching him how to carry himself. And this is what people need to remember as a believer. You need a cover. That your pastor pour into you, that your pastor speak into your life, that your pastor guide you and tell you how to carry yourself when you're dealing with a flock. Ah. It needs to pour into us and talk to us about how to carry. And most of all, we speak a lot a lot of tongues in Pentecostalism, but what we're really missing is character. We're going to give an account. We're speaking a lot, a lot of tongues, but God is looking at your character. Are you, yeah, are you made in my image? Are you walking like me? Oh. Are you feeding the poor, visiting the sick? Okay. Are you visiting those who incarcerated? Those are the things that Jesus said, spoke about. But he did them in what? Love. Right, love. 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 Yeah, you got to be lovable. You can't be smoothy and arrogant and cocky and all that. I don't want nobody to touch me. You got to be That's too arrogant. You know, nobody can shake your hand. Nobody can embrace you. You have to be a little touchable. I see some. Yeah, I see people who do that, and, and they turn people off. They have turned people off. You have to be very careful how you carry yourself as a Christian. Yeah, that's true, because people watch. Yeah, they watch you. And we may be the only church that they see, see a Bible they, 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 Yeah, we're like walking Bibles. Right, 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 right. That's right. If you don't read the Bible, read it from cover to cover. We got a church. Yeah, and, you, and not carry just the Bible in your hand, but live in the light. Right. Yeah. You have to live the life. Verse number 12 is an example. This explains it. This is one of the most important qualifications for a church leader. The word translated example, tupas, meaning model, image, idea, or pattern. A pastor must be a model of faithfulness, purity, perseverance, and godly living. Only, thing, only those may be placed in the office of an overseer of whom the church can say to its members. The leader has lived a God, godly life 
and worthy example. People are watching your lives. This is teaching you how to be well groomed in ministry. He wants us to live a life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it takes time. You have to be processed. Yeah. We get dealt with the things of the world. Now we're dealing with the things of the church. Yeah. And you have to remember this too. Everybody in church isn't saved. Mm-hmm. Some people are deeply religious. You're not judging. You're just watching. Mm-hmm. And God is checking the fruit that's on the tree. Right. Like the fig tree. Either you're going to be fruitful or you're going to be what? Fruitless. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. So he's checking our character even when we come together. Right. How is your attitude? Mm-hmm. I seen a girl in church, and I mean that attitude was just her, horrendous. Just she had a bad, bad spirit, bad spirit. Nobody talked to her. People would look at her and come the eyes. They hated to see her coming. But you a Christian, and she had the gift of tongues and interpretation. Did she? But her character was off. And I mean, God would speak to her through tongues and give her the interpretation. Yeah. And when she come down, she just beat as a rattlesnake. I said, what's wrong with her? But the Bible says also, gifts and callings come without what? Repentance. You can be gifted and still be the most nastiest person in the world. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. In a dark place. Yeah. In a dark place. In a dark place. One man said something to a pastor years ago. He said, Jesus ain't nothing but a blue eyed devil. And that pastor said, Sir, you gonna pray for that. That night, that man had a severe stroke and died in his sleep. What? You can't have Yeah, you cannot be playing with a holy God. And he told him, that was his nephew, told him, he said, Uncle, you was wrong for sinning. He said, I feel for you right now. He said, I'm going to get away from you. He said, you done said the wrong thing. Yeah. But this is the stuff that we go through in this land and in this time. There's a lot of self-proclaimed prophets who are in the land, who are not under one of leadership, who are not obeying God, but called themselves and went out on their own terms. You have to be so very careful how you go out here and say God has called you and you put titles on yourself. Now you can become elder online. Online, yes. Prophet online. Online. Doctor online. And bishop and apostle online. Online. You got to yes. just pay three hundred dollars and they'll send you a certificate and say you've been certified. Do so you yeah. take a class? Oh, they give you a class yes, session too. They give you the books and everything. Everything. You pay for it too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you still have to set up a leadership. They know about the internet. God wants you up under somebody that can protect your soul from the Right. Amen? Number 12 says a false prophet and teacher often points to their past ministry success. Come on. We have a few more minutes to go. Again, many false pastors turn into a false prophet and teacher over a period of time. Just because God did good through someone in their past does not mean they are sure a true pastor is pleasing to the Lord. God is so powerful that he can bring about converts and develop true Christian even through false prophets and teachers. That's talking about those gifts. People still get saved and that pastor may be false. This is not me saying it, but it's the paper saying it. So this this has happened. Yeah. God can spare that person. Well, how, God, how does God spare us? Through his grace. His grace is sufficient. His grace, yeah. yeah. He gives us a chance to get it right. Yes. That's grace? That's grace. Yeah. Not luck. Grace. Grace. You're coming? What's mercy? Mercy is what they live with in the Old Testament. That was like a, a mist. The mercy of God rested upon the Old Testament prophets. Uh-huh. That carried them through even when they would mess up. Grace and mercy. Yeah, grace and mercy are two different things. Now we're up under grace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But don't play with the grace. Right. Oh, if I do this, God will forgive me. Yeah. That's playing. Yeah. One man will tell me, oh, God forgave David. Now he's going to forgive me too. Yeah. I just looked at that brother. I'm just okay. Yeah, you, can, you can tell him he's made up. We're coming from Philippians chapter 1, verses 15 to 18. Philippians 
Corinthians chapter 1, verses 15 to 18. And little girl, as you over there telling your grandma to stop? Oh, she ain't telling me. Hey, what are you doing? You gonna be fine? Stop. You gotta think about it. Philippians chapter 1, verse 15 to 18. Will you have the same man? Amen. It says here, Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one who preached Christ of contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding every way whether in um, pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. You have to preach Christ, but you got to make sure your heart is clean. Not preaching with envy or with strife. You have to preach with a clear conscience. Shh. Yeah. Anybody can preach, but are you preaching successfully? Is your ministry going forward? Mm -hmm. God wants us to preach, but preach successfully. With no strife, no contention in our heart. Not envying, not adding bonds to the word. When I say bond, you're preaching so, but you still have bondage yourself. Oh, like a heaviness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of just on you? Mm -hmm. I guess we okay. So God wants us to preach with the, the liberty. But what she has called us to be free. The same way Jesus Christ is free, he wants us to be free. Amen? Amen. 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 That's how Christ wants us to preach and be a success in preaching. It says here, over time, however, the proof of this usually fades, and thus the typical talk about the glory days of the past and remind people often their past success in ministry. There will be some high levels when you go out to preach a minister. Mm -hmm. But God don't want you dwelling on the past. Right? Sometimes we talk about the past too much. That's right. And the Bible says, and consider not what? The old man. man. That's right. But the new man. But if any man be Christ, he is a new creation. Old you. things. Yeah. I used to be hit him high when I used to preach. Oh, I remember I cast out them devils. No people were slain in the spirit. Oh, that was. You know, okay. Bragging and boasting and talking about the old man, old things. Okay. But let me tell you something. Sometimes the anointing will leave. If you do something against God's will, that anointing will depart from you. Mm -hmm. You will lie dormant. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. If you sin it and you never repent it. No, I mean, you can't talk about what, what you did in the past. Like. Right. Sometimes God doesn't want us to bring up the past because our sins have been forgiven. Our yeah. sins have done away. Even, even when you preach like 30 years ago. Yeah. God may not be used to it, but you still have doors open. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Okay, remember, I, I want you to be focused over here. These are new doors. Those doors are already open. That's done. It's been shut. I'm using you in this manner. You ain't always going to preach. Sometimes you may give a word of knowledge, right. a word of prophecy, or sometimes God may call you into a season of prayer. Yeah. But he don't want you focusing on all things. He wants you to focus on what he's put before you. That's why when you pray, you ask God, what is your will for me in this season? Oh, my It's a different time and a different season. Like we're in a summer season. God, what is, your, what is for me in this summer season? Do you want to teach, preach, do you want to prophesy, do you want to pray for the sick? God will reveal. Okay. But he don't want you to focus on old things. Say what? When he says old things have passed away. Behold, all things are coming. Yeah. yeah. That's how God wants us to think. And our mind is still being transformed from the residue of the world. Yeah. Not the residue. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, Matthew chapter 7 verses 23, 22 and 23. 
I said, I'm not in the mood for this today. <laughs> really not in the mood today. I'll be good today. Yeah. And then the truth said, why you look like that? I said, because I know what you're going to tell me. I really don't want to hear that today. <laughs> like, you know, I said, that's good, because I'm just trying to tell you. He was funny, too, just as funny as I am. Yeah, no choice. So I said, what did the Lord tell you? He said, the Lord told me to tell you, come back, because he not finished with you. <laughs> I said, what? He said, you got to come back. Yeah, you got to. Yeah, and I went yeah, back. Yeah. I went back out of obedience. And then when I went back, they told me I had to sit down for six months. I was burning up, boy. Yeah, that's what I do. I said, Lord, come on. I haven't did anything. He said, just obey. And I mean, God was so sweet about it. He said, just obey. Yeah. So I sat. I October, and I didn't start ministry again until like May. And then you had a process. The process. Yeah. Well, I, was, I was crying and everything. I was looking at the people rolling my eyes. I ate all of y'all. I was crying and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I sat there and I watched people go forth. They didn't have more anointing. I said, Lord, what is this? And one day God spoke to me. I got a phone call to be on TV. Yeah, I was over that. I was over that. And uh, it was still 2011. And I said, Lord, uh, he said, call your pastor and ask me, can you go? I don't want to be you know, God will be very calm with us and patient with us. Yeah. And I called my pastor and told him, I said, I know I'm sitting down in church, but it's okay if I go and minister on TV with so and so and so and so. He said, call me tomorrow about 6 o'clock and I'll give you a yes or no. Mm -hmm. And I was praying, I said, God, please let him say yes. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, I don't want to go. Mm -hmm. So I went and I sat down and I said, Lord, I don't want to go. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, I don't want to go. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, I don't want to go. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, I don't want to go. I said, Lord, I don't want to go. I said, Lord, I don't want to go. He said, but you still got to sit down on Sunday. I said, okay. But you see how God worked that out? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And the Lord spoke to me and said, Randy, they got you sitting down in the flesh, but I got you standing up in the spirit. What? That's all right. That's a testimony. And I had to go here. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I finished sitting in that position. Uh, a lot of people was upset. They weren't mad with me. They was upset with the leader. Really? Yeah, because I hadn't did anything. I left, came back, somebody lied and said I left out of anger. Oh, no. I was like, you know, people take... believe a lie. Oh, they will so fast. Yeah. 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 So, they won't even ask you. Yeah. 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 They just believe. Yeah, they blend the Kool Aid. Yeah. So that's what happened. But everybody can't take that test. No. But I passed that test. Good. Then I had me pray at the minister's meeting, and I said, okay. And then some left. Now, that whole staff, about a fourth, or fifth is now gone. Wow. Yeah, so that's something. Did you want to say anything wrong? Mm -hmm. Nothing. You're so funny. But, uh, yeah. And it says here, verse 23, and it says, And them I will profess unto them, I never knew you not. You're going to be surprised. A lot of people walk right here in ministry, and God will tell you on that day of judgment, I never knew you not. That means you never really confess that he was Lord. You were never really baptized in this thing or filled with the Holy Ghost. But your works was done of what? Iniquity. Mm -hmm. And it says here, these words Christ is unmistakably clear that a preacher who proclaimed the gospel of the name of Christ cast out demons, performed miracles, while himself has no genuine saving faith in Christ. Scripture teaches that the fervent gospel preaching and appeal zeal for righteousness and the occurrence of miracles can be performed. In that age of under the influence of the power of Satan, Paul warns Satan himself to transform into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing and he's a minister among being transformed into ministers of righteousness. He's trying to tell you a lot of people come with signs and wonders, but they love the devil themselves. My friend was in Atlanta, Georgia, and he went to a revival. And they had this great evangelist there who had signs, wonders, and miracles and prophesied. Right. So there was a young lady, she was disturbing the service. And the evangelist said, stop the music and she's distracting me. He said, I have asked everybody here to sit down and be quiet while I'm trying to minister. He told the young lady, uh, I have asked you to sit down several times. Would you please sit down? She looked up at him and said, How dare you tell me to sit down? You're one of us. What? Yes, 
Oh, she was possessed with yes. the devil. devil. That's right. They said that evangelist took that mic and ran right out the door and ran out the door. Yep. That's some spirits in the Bible. I said, listen, that just here. That's something. Different spirits is in the Bible. Yeah. So his works was really. Exactly. Her works was of, his works was of the devil. And one of the mothers said, I always knew something was off of him. She never said anything. Everything God revealed to you is not always for the public. No, it's not. No, it's not. Everything you see, you can't speak on. You can't say nothing. Some things you just can't say. It'd be funny. But that's how God revealed things sometimes. It was in a, a man of God that came here to the city of Buffalo. And may God bless him. I'm not even crushed by the spirit. He came in. He was high in the Lord and high in the spirit. He did a revival, and mm -hmm. one of the church mothers kept looking at him. She kept going. <laughs> they said, Mother, don't you start with that. She I know that's right. She said, come here. She said, you are, you are an apostle? She, they talk. She said, he said, yes, Mother, I'm an apostle. She said, well, how long have you been an apostle? He said, about five years. He said, who did you, she said, who did you sit up on? She started asking questions. She's supposed to ask. Yeah. And she said, okay. She said, what did you put a call into ministry? And what did you see at the end of the other Holy Ghost? She started going down the list. She looked at him, she said, look more like this in her face. She said, Ooh. She said, I'm not stupid. She said, you're a false prophet and you're not going to be here long. And she's still living right down to this day. She went to church brothers and the church of God in Christ. Mother, no she way. Said, yeah. she, said, she, said, she said, you're going to take them people somewhere else. She said, you're going to mess up their lives. And she said, you're going to pay the price for what you did. Then the key the city and took some people with him. Some of the people died. Just like that mother said. Just like that mother said. She was on point. That's when you're here. But yeah, mother called that thing out and read that man like a, a bad novel. Wow, oh, mother, when he walked in, I kept looking at my prince and ready, let's go here, this apostle. I said, okay, be going, but I don't want no prophecy from now. He walked in, deacon his eyes kept shifting back and forth. I said, what's wrong with your friend? He said, what you mean? I said, his eyes keep shifting back and forth. He looked over at the side and kept doing like this. I said, I said there's something wrong with that man. And he got exposed right before. <laughs> the things you see in ministry will blow your mind. That's true. That's true. So this is what I'm talking about today. The true prophet and the false prophet. From experience, from the notes, from the words. Uh, St. Matthew chapter 7, the same chapter, verse 15 says, Beware of false prophets, uh, which come to you in sheep's wolves in sheep's clothing. Inwardly they're raven wolves. Oh, yeah. They come with signs, miracles, and wonders, but their fathers from above the ground. Okay, repeat It says here, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Where is that? Where come out? Say Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Yeah, And you shall know them by the fruit. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but corrupt trees bringeth forth evil fruit. That's why when you go to church, you're supposed to be a fruit inspector. The inspector? You're supposed to inspect. Yeah. Be able to discern. If you don't have to give the discernment, you're supposed to when you see the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you're supposed to be able to discern the very things of God. Amen? So you have to be focused. That's why we teach you this. You can't go to everybody's church if you cannot eat from everybody's table. You cannot. Everybody can't preach to you. Everybody can't prophesy to you. And everybody cannot lay hands on you. Because you might be entertaining somebody who has a spirit of evil on them. That's right. Or their, their spirit is not pure before God. So that's what we're talking about today. The true prophet and the false prophet, and we'll continue the rest of next week. We've got two more weeks to go. So be blessed, every one of you. I'm Pastor of Prophetic Voice, Randy G. Newman of Prophetic Fire and Word Ministries.
We're going to ask that Deacon Ms. Ruffin close us out with a prayer.